not generate two hundred thousand dollars in surplus. So then you have no home building, and Mavi's just going straight for zero. You look at the data; it's like anyway. That wasn't my point. <laughs> it's really remarkable to check it out. Now here's here's the thing: you by now this is imprinted permanently in your brain, and so the synchronicity, right? The peak is pretty much aligned here, pretty much misaligned. Here's our peak. That's the U.S. trough. That, that's as out of sync as you can get. So this is really an extraordinary, and I gather this is global. I mean, you talk to anybody, it's pretty much in the same time frame. The production cycle peaked on the entire planet and then decreased. Um, here's the cycle in terms of pricing. And I just put Harvey's uh, second quarter Oahu home price in uh, right here. Okay, so here's Orange County. Here's Maui. Maui may be trying to find, you know, its final resting place. But again, <laughs> the synchronicity. I, I, I threw these data together for Harvey's research group. If you take um, Orange County, uh, Anaheim, Santa Ana, um, San Diego, Carlsbad, San Marcos, San Diego County, San Francisco, Oakland, Fremont. Put those three data sets together, and Maui and Oahu. The peak is in exactly the, on a season. These are seasonally adjusted data. So I take the forest data and I take the California forest data <laughs> and I seasonally adjust it. The peak is in exactly the same quarter, with the exception of San Francisco, which for some reason had a peak about a year later. So they had to go higher so they could fall farther, <laughs> which I'll show you in another slide. But again, here's what we were used to back in the back of the day, right? We were used to first it happens in Orange County, then it goes to the western edge of Orange County. Maui, and then finally, paddles <laughs> uh, paddles over to Hawaii because you can't take the super ferry on the bar. That's like your blood test. It's one of those your brain on drugs. Pardon me. I'm sorry. Yeah, Pete was um, uh, I think it's first quarter of '06. The peak for sales. Oh, is that a laser? You're right there. I can never see these things. No, the other way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a little small. Oh, it's good. And then it, then it then, okay, here is your brain. <laughs> but thanks. I probably, I probably. Um, and you can also see it with the case filler comparison, also, although that, that, that's a slightly different kind of index. Strictly speaking, those aren't comparable. The timing, though, is, is uh, notable. Oh, should I do that? Yeah, but later. Okay. Um, so let's think about some of the regional variation of performance. These are um, mortgage delinquency rates, um, 30 days or more past due. And uh, the most recent data, so these are old, this is fourth quarter, I think. 5% uh, in Hawaii, um, up into double digits in the top tier of states. You kind of have to give Mississippi some slack because a, a lot of that's not Katrina legacy. Um, but there is an interesting pattern in the top 15 states in that they're either in the you know California, Arizona, Nevada complex, or they're Florida and the South, or they're, they're the auto patch um, you know, part of the country, Ohio, Northern Ohio, Southern Michigan, <laughs> and uh, Indiana, parts of Indiana. Um, and I think the bottom five states, if I recall correctly, are all um, besides um, Bill, um, Washington, Oregon, Southern Dakotas, Montana, and uh, Idaho. So Hawaii is in the Pacific Northwest. If you go to the Fed's website, they have a chart um, showing 90 days serious delinquency, and you can see Hawaii is geographically directly depicted in the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dark patches are the uh, the dark patches are the most toxic counties. And this is really kind of interesting. I was presenting to the Western State Bar Association, and somebody says, what the hell is that? And it's one of these, um, you know, Montana, Western Montana, Rocky Mountain resort areas uh, uh, where the, the California all got some kind of love condo. Um, it's also fascinating that evidently nobody lives in the middle of the country. <laughs> Which would be a really cool road trip, you know, from like Canada down to El Paso. But um, and I don't know what's going on in the North Slope of Alaska. It's, it's uh, falls or something. 
But you can see the, again, those regional clusters of the dark spots and then uh, the range of variation from 1.5% or 2% on Oahu to uh, double digits. Uh, so you know, a lot of variation for farms. Here's the thing. We rely on geographic diversity of experience, right, to build portfolios in which the diversification reduces risk relative to having concentration, <coughs> geographic concentration of exposure in one or another part of the country. That's, that's they taught us this at not only elementary, right? Now shall diversify your economy. <laughs> Which by the way is stupid. I mean that's just okay, we live out in the middle of the goddamn ocean. So we get to do about two things that people actually care to buy from us. Maybe three. And after that you're done. The list is not really long. Diversifying is just a waste of time. Um, I mean, for a small, open economy in the middle of nowhere, you get to do about three things max. And the first one's obvious, that's tourism. And the second one is kind of chance. And the third one, nobody knows, but they're always trying. So that's cool. But it's not a long list. And by the way, self-sufficiency, those guys should just be taken out and shot. We want to be self-sufficient in taro production. What the hell for? If you actually ate taro, <laughs> you would always import it from the Philippines or somewhere where it's really produce it cheap, right? So, I mean, the whole thing is just stupid. So, sorry, I just had a <laughs> Here's why, here's, theoretically, why does the diversification work? Because you, if you have a diverse pattern of risk exposure, like if you own the whole country's exposure to mortgage risk, then the fact that some are worse than others means that the portfolio risk is lower than would be the case than if all your exposure was in Clark County, Nevada, for example. You see what I mean? However, the assumption under which it's true that a diversified portfolio is superior than individual exposure relies on the fact that these regions are not correlated with one another. And what we see in this housing cycle is it's all correlated. It's not as bad in Hawaii, but it's getting worse at the same time. You see what I mean? It's the movement that's correlated. So you build these CDOs and you want to understand why there's toxic waste in the more across the mortgage lending landscape, it's because people priced AAA tranches of collateralized debt obligations of mortgage-backed securities, right, as if these assets were not correlated, but they are. Maybe they haven't been in the past, but they are now because we live in a world with eBay. So what's happened is that the correlation has actually well, you thought it was AAA because you used the wrong pricing model. Because you used a model that said either the correlation was fixed or you just had the wrong number. But it's not fixed, it's variable. The correlation went up. And so the value of these assets go down. So that's, that's the basic financial math that's happening. So it's, the regional variation is interesting. The concentration, regional concentrations of risk, in risk are interesting. But it's the fact, notwithstanding the fact that some places are worse than others, that it got worse at the same moment. That is what's blown up the whole thing. So let's turn to what Harvey was telling us the other day. I don't know, the newspapers, now normally I show time series on a log scale. And the reason is that slopes are percent changing. But just so that we're clear about why I think the newspaper was wrong. And I don't know who wrote the press release at the board. Okay, so that's a big part of what's wrong with the news, is that it's not actually the news. It's some professional communication type person's press release. Okay, it's the whole spin thing. So, um, anyway, so these are the data. Oh, and by the way, the board does not seasonally adjust their data, so I seasonally adjust the data. So this is what they look like on a season adjusted basis. Here's May, here's June. I'm not getting that big recovery rush of good feeling. 